Hello, this is Greg Witt with Alkenwild. Well, here we are tackling the tough issues that mainstream media refuses to talk about. Today, the question is trekking poles. Should you use them or not when hiking in the Alps? In the next few minutes, I'll give you the pros and the cons, the benefits and the drawbacks of using trekking poles in the Alps. Then, I'll provide some pointers on what to look for in trekking poles. I'll give you several recommendations and a few words of warning. First off, I find that on extended treks, such as the Holt Route, where you have the most avid and experienced hikers, about 70% of those on the trail, especially the Europeans, are using trekking poles. On day hikes, where you tend to see more tourists and less experienced hikers, that percentage is much lower, less than 50%. Trekking poles offer some well-documented benefits. First is what I call the mechanical advantage. With trekking poles, you're using arm and shoulder muscles to relieve the leg muscles. One study showed that on level ground, poles reduce the weight that the body carries by approximately 10 pounds in every step. On an incline, that reduction is increased to about 16 pounds per step. This translates into tons of weight for even a short two-hour hike. Now, let's not kid ourselves. You're still carrying the weight. It's just that with trekking poles, the load is distributed to other large muscle groups, thereby reducing the impact on knee joints and leg muscles. Second, poles help with balance. I find them especially helpful crossing streams, on boulder hopping, uh, walking on scree slopes, crossing snow fields, or walking on soft ground. And you'll find all of those challenges in the Alps. Remember the line from Orwell's Animal Farm, four legs good, two legs bad. Well, having four legs provides greater stability and reduces the likelihood of injury. Poles may even allow you to toss your high top ankle supporting boots in favor of a lightweight trail shoe. Finally, using poles gives you a healthier walk. By elevating your hands, circulation is improved and your heart rate is reduced. You'll find your hands won't swell up as they might without poles. Poles give you a rhythm that leads to a relaxed, more regular breathing pattern and increase stamina. If poles can reduce fatigue, extend your day, allow you to hike longer and farther, you'll enjoy the experience more. Now, do poles have some drawbacks? Yes. First, poles increase your total energy expenditure. You'll burn more calories. If you have tired legs and sore knees, then poles can be a real help. But if you have a tired body, if you're pushing your cardiovascular system to its limits, then poles can be more a hindrance than a help. So if you're not fueling yourself properly, you could run out of gas more quickly using poles. Secondly, poles are in the way. They can make it more difficult to open a map or look at a watch or compass or wipe your brow, take a drink or have a snack. And finally, when poles are not in use, poles are just another piece of gear that you need to carry and worry about. It's easy to lay them down or leave them at a rest stop or on a tram or bus. You need to collapse them or stow them in a pack before you board a train. On commercial airlines, poles must be checked since they're not allowed to board the aircraft under current security regulations. So there you have the pros and cons. Now for my recommendations. For hiking in the Alps and for any air travel, poles must be collapsible. They must fit conveniently into checked luggage. Collapsible poles also allow you to adjust your poles throughout the day. You can make them shorter for ascending terrain and longer for steep descents. All major pole manufacturers make a three-part collapsible telescopic pole with a collapse length of about, about 22, 23 inches, which then breaks into three sections of about 20 inches long. Before you buy your poles, make sure that they'll fit into your suitcase or check bag. Next, choose a locking system that's easy to use and durable. All the major pole manufacturers, Leckie, Comperdale, Black Diamond, Easton, they've gone to a simple flick lock, and it can be quickly opened and closed with one hand. It's more durable than the twist lock system, which you still see on many poles. Trekking poles vary in weight, with the lightest poles being carbon fiber poles that weigh less than 20 ounces per pair. You'll pay a premium for super lightweight poles. They cost about $150 per pair, and you may be just as happy lugging a few more ounces and paying $50 or $100 less. I think comfort, functionality, and durability are more important than an ounce or two. Then find a grip 
that is ergonomically designed and well suited to your hand. Grips can be hard rubber, cushion foam, or natural cork. Natural cork, or a cork composite, is favored by many hikers because it's lightweight, comfortable, and it provides a secure grip even when your hands are wet. Some poles come with an anti-shock feature that um, has a small spring mechanism in the handle or in the upper shaft. This is purely optional and it's a matter of personal preference. I never found a great benefit in the anti-shock trekking pole, so it's up to you. Finally, look for a strap that's comfortable, secure, and easily adjustable. A simple stitch seam or a protruding plastic edge may not be noticeable in the store, but after eight hours on the trail, it's going to be driving you crazy. Most well-designed trekking poles and most quality trekking poles have overcome these little minor irritants, so they shouldn't be a problem. So, on balance, do I recommend trekking poles for hiking with us in the Alps? Yes, wholeheartedly. The longer the trek, the more time on the trail, the more you'll appreciate the benefits of quality trekking poles. Because I want you to have the best Swiss hiking vacation possible, feel free to contact me with any gear questions. I'm always glad to share my trekking expertise. This is Greg Witt with Alpen Wild. See you on the trail.